1968, the Democratic Convention led to a police riot. How could an event that's supposed to be a celebration of your presidential nominee devolve into such chaos? To understand that very topic, we actually need to go back to 1968, debatably the most important social year in U.S. history. So let's run it back. Take a little field trip, get our tunnel vision on, get our mindset back to 1968. So we're about eight years removed from when JFK was elected. We're about five years away from when he was assassinated. The main period of change ignited by the civil rights movement has been going on for the past eight years. Starting 1964, 1965, the Vietnam War begins escalating. The Summer of Love was in San Francisco the year before. The first major anti-war protests were also the year before. Earlier that year, MLK is assassinated. It leads to race riots across the country. Two months later, one of the leading Democratic candidates, Robert F. Kennedy, is also assassinated. All of this together creates a society that by 1968 is just rife with tension, rife with conflict. <sighs> Damn, I'm stressed just saying all that. So now that our field trip's over and we're in the mindset, let's talk about the convention itself and what led to that police riot. The convention is in Chicago, and the Chicago mayor is Richard J. Daley. My way or the highway, rough and tumble, Chicago politician kind of guy. Needless to say, not a big fan of the hippies. Multiple anti-war groups and student groups try to get permits to protest at the convention. Richard J. Daley and the Chicago government deny all of them. He doesn't want the hippies there at all. The hippies are planning to come. Rock, meet hard place. So he calls up 11,000 policemen on 12 hour shifts, round the clock police coverage. He also calls up a bunch of Illinois National Guardsmen. This leads to a staggering total of 20,000 law enforcement and soldiers in the city. Protesters start showing up anyway. They're planning to protest whether there's permits or not. For five days, they have protests. One of them, they actually nominated a pig for president, which is very funny. They all saying, you're a grand old pig. They paraded him around the Civic Center. Uh, one of the policemen actually said, you're all going to jail. The pig squealed on you, <laughs> which is very funny Chicago humor. The last day of the convention is when things change. So 10,000 protesters go to Grant Park on the last day of the convention. And I cannot stress this enough how central Grant Park is in Chicago. It's right along the lakeshore and it's right next to the Loop, which is Chicago's main financial district. That big parade that was in Ferris Bueller's day off, that's just a couple blocks away. That's how central this thing is. The plan marched from there several miles to where the convention itself was being held. Now, when there's 20,000 troops in the city and you have a mayor that's dead set on not letting the protest affect the convention, that's not gonna work. That's what's happening with the protests. Let's put that aside for a second. Let's go to the convention itself, which was also pure chaos. There's police inside the actual convention itself. There's so many of them inside that it creates a very packed, charged atmosphere. You could barely move inside there. Now you got about 30, 40% of the delegates that are voting that are fiercely, fiercely anti-war. The rest are pro-war. The actual ratio was much closer to 50-50. They pulled some political shenanigans to get the pro-war platform through. That's a topic for another video. There's these crazy heated debates happening, people yelling left and right, pure chaos, and it's being filmed on live TV. TV. Reporters are getting manhandled by police. That's happening inside the convention. Let's travel back to Grant Park. The atmosphere is tense. You can feel it in the air. There's police all around the protesters in Grant Park. The police are annoyed that the hippies are there. They have orders to stop them. The protesters are annoyed that the police are there. They have a mission to make their voice heard for the anti-war movement. No one's happy. There's an American flag flying on a flagpole. A protester climbs it to take it down. That's the spark that lights the powder keg. The police fire tear gas in, they move in, they start beating protesters left and right, people are getting arrested. One of the leaders of the protest, Tom Hayden, takes up a microphone, tells the people to move into the city. If they're gonna be tear gassed, let it happen in the city. That's exactly what happens. So they move into downtown Chicago in the loop. They try to get through to the convention, they can't do it. They end up trying to get to the Conrad Hilton. That's where a lot of the delegates are staying. Meanwhile, tear gas is being fired at them. Delegates and people staying at the hotel started feeling it inside because there was so much tear gas outside. And police start beating protesters on the street. It got so chaotic that they couldn't tell who was a protester and who wasn't. People, journalists were getting harassed, beat and arrested right outside the hotel where the delegates are staying, right in the middle of a major city. So this is all happening as the convention is coming to a climax. What ends up happening inside the convention is that the votes are being tallied. Senator Ribicoff stands up to give a speech in support of George McGovern, the anti-war candidate. George McGovern is president of the United States. We wouldn't have to have Gestapo tactics in the streets of Chicago. The convention becomes an uproar. Mayor Daley mouth slurs at the guy. The situation inside is getting more and more tense, more combative. 
Come back over here to the Conrad Hilton. The protesters have gotten here. Tear gas is in the air. It's getting into the ducks. The Battle of Michigan Avenue now begins. There's a line of National Guardsmen and police guarding the hotel. The protesters slam into them. The police start beating anyone they can see they're assuming is a protester. People walking down the street, bystanders coming to see the chaos. They're getting beat. They're getting arrested. There's protesters running around trying to get the tear gas out of their eyes. Some of them have blood all over them. The journalists are getting beaten. There's paddy wagons full of arrested people getting taken away left and right. Pure chaos. Mind you, this is happening on live TV. The broadcasts are going back and forth from the riot to the convention, from the riot to the convention, back to the convention. Vice President Hubert Humphrey ends up winning the nomination. And as he's giving his speech, this riot is still happening at the Conrad Hill. The now famous chant from the protesters, the whole world is watching. The whole world is watching. That chant is happening as he's giving his speech. Before we wrap this up, if you're enjoying this video, subscribe below for more nerd alerts. We're gonna have long form videos, YouTube shorts, interesting tidbits of history, cool stuff your history teacher didn't teach you. It's free for you, helps me out quite a bit. All right, back to the good stuff. So what came of all this? The protesters of the anti-war movement came out of this thinking they had a major victory. That's not what they found in the American public. That silent majority that Richard Nixon was appealing to, they were on board with what Richard Daly had done. They were tired of the hippies, they were tired of the violence, they were tired of the rioting. And they were on the side of the Chicago police. Richard Nixon's convention happened in Miami a short time later. By comparison, it was very orderly. There was no protests, no riots. For anyone that was on the fence about voting, this became a clear signal. Richard Nixon is stable, the Democratic Party is in chaos. It was a very, very close election that Richard Nixon won, and that convention almost certainly swung it in his favor. And that's it, that's all we got. So if you enjoyed it, again, please throw a subscribe, helps a lot. See you on the next one.